Our next guest is an iconic illusionist who has won 21 Emmys, earned 11 Guinness World Records, and has been named a living legend by the U.S. Library of Congress. His book, David Copperfield's History of Magic, is available now. Get your copy before it disappears. <laughs> Please welcome to the show the always great David Copperfield. <laughs> Hello, David. How are you? How are you? I'm doing very well. I want to begin by asking... I'm changing my name to Gaia, by the way. I'm changing my <laughs> okay. name to Gaia. It's a very hot name right now. Good. Yes. Getting it on the ground floor is a good idea. Uh, what is the difference, David, uh, between uh, an illusionist and a magician? Well, my joke is, when, if you call yourself an illusionist, you get to uh, make 20% more, <laughs> which is true. All right, so, so it's sort of like a classy magician. That's right. Now, uh, I will speak to the fact that I've seen your show live. Uh, not only was it incredibly memorable, even was made more so by the fact that I was there for Andy Samberg's bachelor party. And then afterwards, <laughs> uh, we went backstage and you had a very uh, specific illusion built just for Andy. I did. Well, what happened was I was shocked that you guys were there because, you know, bachelor party, you have strippers or David Copperfield. <laughs> hmm. Okay, David Copperfield. Perfect. So I'm doing the show, and backstage, my whole crew is building a dick-in-the-box box. <laughs> because Andy was there. And, you know, they're crafting it, the glue is drying, and the show's over with. And I come on backstage, and you were very kind to come backstage and say hello. And we levitated a box with my uh, magic. Here is a floating dick-in-the-box. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So, you have, uh, over the years, you've basically built a museum of magic. You are in it right now. It is uh, yeah. your sort of self-curated museum. It is not open to the public. Uh, one of the reasons is there are so many secrets that would be revealed if people saw it. So now you've put together this book, which is sort of a peek inside. Was it fun to sort of pick out your favorite pieces and, and tell the backstory of them? It was awesome, because there's so many amazing stories of the ladies and gentlemen who uh, informed this art form. And uh, the art form of magic really has influenced art, influenced uh, design, influenced robotics, uh, technology, incredible things. Uh, the first smart home to exist was a magic effect. Robert Houdin, there's a, his actual house door is behind me there. There's a door that opens up, you know, by magic. And now every grocery store, you know, every CVS we go to, to you know, <laughs> get the shot, you go through that. That was a trick at the time. So. Um, all kinds of things were affected by magic. And, and I get to tell those stories in a really wonderful way. At this museum, you know, we've had, you know, uh, Guillermo del, Tor del Toro will be here. And he'll get very emotional because the cinema was invented from a, as a magic effect. Movies was a magic trick. And uh, George Melies took that magic effect and made it into something that we could tell stories with. So, so much of uh, what we live in our life has been prototyped by magicians. Do you remember the first trick you did? Was magic something that had come to you at a very young age? I made my teacher disappear. <laughs> I was very popular. <laughs> but then she came back, and all my street cred was lost. <laughs> you, uh, uh, this is a true story that seems like it shouldn't be. You, the secrets to your tricks are hidden somewhere so that uh, whenever you were gone, people could look and read your secrets. Where have you hidden the secrets to your tricks? On, on the moon. On the moon is a real answer. But, now, How did you uh, get them to the moon? Uh, <laughs> well, what happened was, we're able to put them on nickel disks. The ARC mission, my friends at the ARC mission, were able to etch my secrets into uh, uh, nickel disks. And nickel doesn't degrade, the, that element doesn't degrade. It'll be there for a billion years. And uh, those disks with all my secrets were sent to the moon in an in a Israeli lander, unfortunately, <laughs> It didn't land nice, it landed, it crash land. Um, but the, 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 the things don't, they still exist there on the moon. They're a little harder to find. But uh, someday if you are on the moon and you have a metal detector and a microscope, you can actually see my, my magic on the moon. In fact, we're gonna try again with those secrets and the book. So the book and my secrets that go on the moon. So if you don't buy the book, someday you can go to the moon and actually read the book on the moon. Are you worried that if an alien race ever found that first, they'd think Earth was just a planet of magicians? <laughs> That's true, and it would kill my career. <laughs> was, is it true that you were once held up at gunpoint and did a trick to get out of it? 
Yeah, that was a pretty stupid day. I was held up at gunpoint with my crew, in fact. About six of us were there. They held a gun to, to our, our faces, and everybody gave their passports and their money smartly. I stupidly, just by instinct, did what magicians call a pocket dodge, which is where you could show your pockets empty, and they're not really empty. Um, and, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to give up my passport and my money, and I should have, but it worked out okay. We, the, the criminals were caught, and I could have got my stuff back, but if you're out there listening and you're able to do the pocket dodge uh, effect, don't do it. Give them the money. That's okay. Now, obviously, in that moment, it must have been heartbreaking because you probably realized they didn't recognize you as David Copperfield. <laughs> Because I'll tell you, if I had a gun problem. and asked David Copperfield to empty his pockets and he was like, nothing, I'd be like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna check on myself, did. Copperfield. I probably did that move <laughs> because to convince him, I was really somebody, you know, had some talent. <laughs> um, this is very exciting. You actually uh, not only have a history of magic in your museum, uh, you have a piece of history uh, from our show. Uh, we actually referenced him tonight. Um, you have. Uh, the sea captain uh, photo. That's right. We've got the sea captain from your house right here in 3D, but he doesn't have a body. What foul black magic is this? He won't shut up. May every fish you ever eat have high mercury levels! I thought I'd make him disappear. Is that okay with you? I won't go quietly, Copperfield. You may banish me, but I will spend eternity haunting your soul. And if I can't find your soul, I'll take a ghost in your lawn. <laughs> Let's do this. You, David Copperfield. <laughs> no! Don't send me away. I promise I'll be good. <laughs> He's still talking. I will have my revenge, Copperfield. Oh, my God, David, thank you so much for finally getting rid of him for us. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. David Copperfield, everybody. David Copperfield's History of Magic is available now.